Lou Butel and Diana Williams. Scott Clark with sports. Sam Champion with the exclusive AccuWeather forecast. And the Eyewitness News team. Now, Eyewitness News. Good evening, I'm Craig Hurst, in tonight for Bill Butel. And I'm Roz Abrams, sitting in Fort Diana Williams. A big break tonight in the plot for destruction that targeted New York City. Lawmen have made two more arrests. That means all 11 men indicted for the tunnel bombing conspiracy are in custody. They are being held tonight at the Metropolitan Correctional Center in Lower Manhattan. The last arrest came in North Wildwood, not far from Cape May, where Tim Minton picks up the story. Matarawi Mohamed Saleh's life on the run ended abruptly overnight when an FBI SWAT team crashed through the door. I was informed that there was an 11-year-old child who was unharmed. He picked the child up as he was about to flee, recognizing uh, that there were FBI agents there in SWAT clothes. Um, it's just almost moments after he did that, uh, he was stopped and the child was, was put down and was unharmed. Saleh and 31-year-old Ashraf Mohammed, who was arrested for allegedly harboring Saleh, were nabbed at this South Jersey beachfront apartment complex. Saleh is the 11th defendant in an indictment that identified him only as Wahid, last name unknown. The other suspects were all previously arrested, many at a Queens warehouse where they were caught allegedly in the act of mixing explosive chemicals. Investigators say the targets included Hudson River tunnels, the United Nations, and Israel supporting politicians, including Senator Alphonse D'Amato, who was to be assassinated. In Camden Federal Court this afternoon, Soleil, who wore a t-shirt and beach sandals, agreed to be returned immediately to New York City. His lawyer complained that the suspect had been bruised during the arrest and had been given nothing to eat for 16 hours. Magistrate Robert Kugler ordered pictures taken of the bruises and ordered both men held without bail. The FBI won't discuss how it knew where to find Soleil, other than to say that agents were looking for him at his last known address in Jersey City, got a lead, headed south, spotted him, and called in the SWAT team. At FBI headquarters Newark, Tim Minton, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Also tonight, another suspected terrorist has a $2 million price tag on his head. 26-year-old Ramzi Ahmed Youssef, an Iraqi, is wanted by the U.S. State Department. Investigators say he took part in the World Trade Center bombing and then fled to the Middle East. Two years ago, New York City police found the body of Baby Hope. The little girl was nameless, emaciated, and had been brutally murdered. Police have worked every day to find her killer to solve the mystery, but now, with money from their own pockets, the detectives at the 34th precinct are saying goodbye to Baby Hope. Sarah Wallace has details. The tiny white casket carried into St. Elizabeth's Church by police officers from the 34th precinct. Paul bearers for a child they knew only in her death. The two cops who headed the investigation led the funeral procession. To the 34th detective squad, the face in these composite sketches became more than a subject of a murder investigation. She took on a kind of life of her own. She became their own baby hope. It's haunted the detectives the way they found her, stuffed in a picnic cooler off the Henry Hudson Parkway two years ago, tortured and bound. These questions also haunt them still. Who is she? Where did she come from? Who's responsible? Those questions clearly struck a nerve with hundreds of community residents who know Hope only from news reports. They came to honor her too. I can't too see why anybody wouldn't come forward to claim the baby. This woman felt a special need to come. Because I had an abusive childhood and um, the little girl could have been me. Today, Baby Hope was claimed, in a sense, by caring people who gave her her dignity back. The body clothed in a white communion dress tucked in the white casket. The service as beautiful as her death was ugly. Baby Hope has found the best in others, in detectives, in people who had no idea who she was, in all of us who are gathered here. Baby Hope will be buried here at St. Raymond Cemetery in the Bronx. Detectives are still working on the headstone, but it will probably be simple. Just Baby Hope, a detective shield, and the words, we cared. From the Bronx, Sarah Wallace, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Police say the Baby Hope case will remain open until it's solved.
Two wanted men are returning to the scene of the crime tonight, New York City, where they are accused of killing a Park Avenue prince and his wife. Police believe the two men killed Indian prince Teddy Kedkar and his wife last April. George Kobo and Tony Simpson were extradited from Reno, Nevada, and are due back in New York in about an hour. The two men are now accusing each other in the killings. They're also wanted in connection with the May murders of two men on the West Side. Buy it and you are busted. That is the message police got across tonight in a drug sweep of Washington Square Park. Police arrested 22 people when they staged a surprise attack on alleged buyers and dealers in the park. Nine were busted for selling drugs, 20, 11, I should say, for possession. And a drug arrest is why this man is running from our camera. Michael Herslin is the president of a drug rehabilitation center in Freeport, Long Island. Herslin was arraigned today on charges that he attempted to pick up an overnight package from Florida that was filled with cocaine. Police say Herslin admits to being a casual cocaine user. The floods of the Midwest are showing no mercy. Coming up, a camping trip turns to tragedy as a group of explorers are trapped in a washed out cave. Plus, a slaughter that has caused an international uproar. Who executed eight orphans on the streets of Rio? And they made it big as children, but what does it take to keep their star shining in Hollywood? Find out from the new kids on the Hollywood Block later on Eyewitness News. Two Brazilian police officers are in custody tonight. The charge? The execution of seven boys, orphan children who slept in the streets of Rio de Janeiro. Some of the boys were as young as eight. Not one was older than 12 years old. One witness says that the officers tried to kill him, but the gun jammed. He ran. Merchants in Rio say they're plagued by bands of homeless children. They reportedly hire police death squads to intimidate, torture, and even kill some of the children. And over the past three years, more than 4,000 street children have been murdered in Rio. Greg, children are the victims tonight in the Midwest as Mother Nature unleashes her fury. A flash flood roared out of control near St. Louis and a group of young campers were caught in a cave-in. It happened in Melville, just south of the city. Four are dead, three others are missing as the great flood continues to claim victims. No one expected the camping trip to end like this. Rescue workers carrying the body of a young boy across a swollen stream. Firefighters braved the rushing water to find other victims. The water proved to be a deadly enemy when flash floods swept through a cave, catching the campers off guard. The force of the water was so strong, three of the victims were literally flushed out of the cave. They were all three uh, uh, wedged up against a tree all together. So were they, were they, were they, outside they? the cave. That included a counselor and two boys between the ages of 9 and 10 years old. The body of another boy was found inside the cave. All were part of a group from a home for troubled children out on a camping trip. Officials say they ignored crucial warnings. They were not supposed to be here. The park's been closed for two weeks. Barricades have been posted uh, approximately a mile away from here. And unfortunately, they chose to disregard the warning and they were down here and it's a tragedy. Many other children survived. They were shaken up and loaded onto vans to take them home. Counselors refused to talk about this tragedy. I'm not talking about that. Nobody knows what happened. It's nobody's business. Rescue workers are searching for three others who are still missing, including two boys and a female counselor. More tragedy across the Midwest tonight as a hard rain falls, gorging the Mississippi River with even more water. In St. Louis, a crucial flood wall that protects the downtown area sprang a leak. The bloated Mississippi seeped underneath the wall and geysers of water shot out from the ground flooding businesses. In Des Moines, Iowa, a call for caution. Almost all areas have running water once again, but the water system is strained and city leaders are asking people to use the water conservatively. Near Omaha, Nebraska, nearly eight inches of rain fell, forcing the Platte River to overspill its banks and forcing some people to evacuate their homes. Sam Champion will have the exclusive AccuWeather forecast coming up. He'll tell us how long the rain in the Midwest will last. President Clinton's choice for Surgeon General is on the hot seat as she battles accusations of financial misdeeds. Joyce Lynn Elders testified before a Senate panel. She defended herself against charges of mismanagement while she was director of an Arkansas bank. She admitted there had been problems but said there was nothing that should be considered a criminal offense. What was the purpose of uh, uh, 
the loan, such loan. Okay. I borrowed from the bank on various occasions under terms and conditions available to all borrowers. The purpose of the loans were primarily for commercial ventures, including the purchase of real estate. Conservatives are opposed to her views on sex education and condom distribution. Even so, the Senate committee is expected to recommend Dr. Elders be confirmed as the next Surgeon General. And the Senate is expected to confirm Supreme Court nominee Ruth Bader Ginsburg before the August recess. She spent 20 minutes behind closed doors with the Senate Judiciary Committee. The questions were about her personal life. After the meeting, a Republican senator said no further investigation of Ginsburg is needed. While the president's nominee battles for confirmation, the president was at a funeral for a childhood friend in the town called Hope. The president eulogized Vincent Foster as a great protector and a cherished friend. Foster helped Clinton win the White House and then took over as the president's number two attorney. But that ended this week when Foster was found dead in a park apparently from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Coming up on Eyewitness News, they made us laugh and they made us cry. The new kids on the Hollywood block are taking tinsel down by storm, but what do they want to do when they grow up? And they say every dog has his day. Well, this one we are told died and then he came back to life. We'll explain when, cutie, when we come back. Tonight I will be Miss Saigon. Miss Saigon, call 239-6200. Do all good dogs go to heaven? Well, you'd have to ask the one that came back from the dead. They are the odd couple of Oregon. A 90-pound Rottweiler named Heidi and her little buddy Toy. Toy tips the scales at two and a half pounds, and a few weeks ago, Heidi accidentally trampled Toy, apparently killing him. No heartbeat until his owner did some CPR. I held him like this, and I used my thumbs for the chest compression, and I just enclosed uh, the whole muzzle in my mouth and breathed. Toy now, we are told, is fit as a fiddle. Only Heidi knows what he has to say about his out-of-body experience. I guess so. Well, some child stars have given life to some of this summer's biggest blockbuster movies. But can they hold on to the Hollywood magic, or will they just be flashing the pans? Pam Thompson of our sister station, KABC in Los Angeles, continues her series on child stars by taking a look at the future of these new kids on the block. Can I touch it? Sure. Just think of it as... I like cows. Most of the children starring in movies this summer want to be actors when they grow up. I really, really uh, do want to act for my whole life. Actually, yes, I want to grow up to be an actor. I mean, because it's just really fun acting. Well, the only thing that was really hard about the film is trying to train this guy. I mean... But just because they're in the limelight now doesn't guarantee a thing later in life, let alone next year. E.T. is the highest grossing movie of all time, but young Henry Thomas's star quickly faded. <laughs> and little Drew Barrymore started abusing drugs and alcohol when she was barely a teenager. However, she's back on track these days. And Michael Oliver, the problem child in Problem Child and its sequel, was sued by Universal over the money he was paid. Right now, his story does not have a happy ending. So what do child actors have to look forward to? Is he really 12 and a half? There are some stellar role models. Jodie Foster has been acting her entire life. And now, as an adult, she's more successful than ever, acting and directing. The best thing that ever happened to me. Ron Howard is also a good role model. starred in movies and in TV shows as a child, then made the transition to adult actor and finally to director. If the young actors getting their big breaks this summer manage to maintain a fairly normal childhood and then work at continuing their careers as adults, Hollywood magic can strike twice. But then again, not all child actors dream only of making movies. Now, do you want to be an actor when you grow up? Yeah, or an airplane pilot, or a doctor. Well, I mean, if it doesn't work out, maybe I have a career in baseball. In Hollywood, Pam Thompson, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Well, they are cute. A real champagne anniversary for the world's largest producer of French bubbly, Moet Chandon, 
and they really know how to celebrate. This incredible pyramid of 24,000 freestanding crystal champagne glasses took five days to build, and it's almost two stories tall. It'd be kind of fun to knock down, wouldn't it? Brag, brag. <laughs> the Yankees <laughs> are toasting a newcomer. Yeah, you're right about that. He's just up from the farm club, but can Mark Hutton solve the Yankees' pitching woes? Scott Clark has the answer. And no, it is not filet mignon. How does kangaroo temperature yeah, taste like? Yeah. Yeah. When we come back. <laughs> but first, the win four numbers seen earlier tonight on Channel 7. Now we take you to Lottery Headquarters for the live drawing of Take 5. See your tri-state quality Ford dealer and see for yourself. Well, the Yankees getting a little help from the farm tonight. They're going to make a race out of this, aren't they? Yes, they are. And Mark Hutton history. Mark Hutton became the first Australian-born pitcher to start a Major League game tonight. He did it as a Yankee. He faced Mark Langston, the American League starting all-star pitcher, and by Jove, mate, he beat Langston, he did. The 23-year-old Hutton, an all-star in single A in 91, double A in 92. For Mark Hutton, two runs on three hits through eight and one. Big Yankee victory for that Aussie. Now let's take you to Boston. Goose Gossage on in the bottom of the 10th for the A's. Game tied at six to five to keep pace with the Yankees. Toronto leads Texas five to four in the seventh. So Boston with that win, a half game back along with the Yanks. Baltimore right now a game back. This is currently judging from the current stat. Kansas City over Detroit seven to six. Now four back to Tigers. Cleveland over Seattle by five and Milwaukee beat Chicago three to two. Tonight, the Mets are looking to make it six wins and seven tries. They're out west, folks. They're hot in La La Land as we speak, taking on the Dodgers. For their manager, Tommy Lasorda, it's usually a couple of shakes and a sensible meal in the evening. Nuts to that, folks. He's heating high on the hog following a contract extension. Right now, nuts to Tom Candiotti's knuckleball. Away from Mike Piazza, Joe Warsalak made a one nothing Mets. But on for a solo homer, now one to one in the peak. To the board of the National League, Houston over Chicago 5-1. Atlanta beat Pittsburgh by four, and Cincinnati edged the Marlins. Time for tennis. Pathmark tennis from Mawa, New Jersey. Quarterfinal action saw Lisa Raymond and Mary Pierce advance, and this is second seeded Jennifer Capriati. She took on Beverly Bowes tonight in a quarterfinal affair. Let the games begin, and they did get down to it. Scream and a cloud of dust and a high hose over. Capriati advances 6'3, 6'4. In golf, Michelle McGann has taken command midway through the United States Women's Open Golf Championship. If you consider a two stroke advantage, yes, that's what it is. Crooked Stick Club in Carmel, Indiana is where we take you when we begin with the veteran Nancy Lopez still in the hunt here at the 16th hole from off the green. It's what you call a perfect chip. Lopez at three under par, five shots back of the leader. Michelle McGann is that leader, a 66 today. Look at this, though. At 13, a tough fluff on the first try. If at first you don't exceed, try, try, uh, again, dead, solid, perfect. She's the leader at the open. I'm Scott Clark. That's it for sports. Have a great weekend. You too. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. It says here that Sam has a gift for weekend weather watchers? We'll, we'll stick around gift. for a gift. I, I hope you mine. do too. <laughs> yes, and how does kangaroo sound on the menu? A taste test up next. We got deals, I'm telling you, come on! Day at 4, right here on Channel 7. Attention shoppers, there is something new on grocery store shelves down under. Would you believe kangaroo meat? People in Sydney are just eating it up. The newest delicacies include things like roux burger, kangaroo sausage, kangaroo pie, and those who know say it tastes pretty good. It's so lean. It's about two percent. It's wonderful. Just jumps right off the plate. The kangaroo is, of course, a national symbol. You see where that gets you. And may soon be a regular on the restaurant menus. Mm -hmm. His gift better not be kangaroo I was burgers. Say, it's kangaroo burgers for everyone. All <laughs> yeah, right. I yeah. want my present. It said Sam comes <laughs> bearing gifts. gifts. No, I don't write this stuff. Oh, don't try and get out of it. Okay. Where is it? Where yeah. is Tell it? her what she's won, Johnny. <laughs> it's sort of out of radar rage. Okay. Uh, that's the best we can do. 76 degrees outside right now. Relative humidity at 40%. You expect gifts now? <laughs>
<laughs> it's far too late at night. The barometer is rising at this point and a large area of high pressure taking care of us straight through the weekend. But get ready for it. Next week, heat comes back, humidity comes back. We'll be right in the middle of another heat wave for a good part of next week. So enjoy this weekend. North winds at 5 miles per hour. Very pleasant edge on that air outside right now. 89 degrees. The high number at about 4 o'clock this afternoon. 66 degrees at about 4.30 this morning. <laughs> Satellite picture showing you a nice clear pocket of skies. Runs anywhere from the northern coast of Maine all the way down to the Carolinas and it's holding strong and fast. As this high sits right on top of us tomorrow, we're still under good solid protection from it. By Sunday, begins to slide off the coastline a little bit. That will allow a few clouds and in the back end of Sunday. Shouldn't be that big of a problem. We would hope for some rain by Monday and we're hoping for it in the form of thunderstorms, which would typically bring us some larger amounts of rainfall. We might not even get that until Wednesday right now, looking at the way these weather systems are moving or are not moving. Now, we've been telling you about the incredible rainfall amounts that have been going out in the Midwest, and we thought we'd just show you what's been going on here. Concordia, Kansas, this is just for July, folks. 16, more than 16 inches of rain. Normally, they're less than three inches of rain. Salina, Kansas, they're about 17 inches. Normally, they're just about two and a half inches. In Cedar Rapids, Iowa, at more than 10 inches of rain, normally, they're less than three inches for the month. So it's an awful lot of standing water. Are there more showers in the forecast? Yes, for those folks. It's more than just showers. It's solid rain for a good part of this weekend all the way through this area. Well, we've got clear skies to go with our weekend. 66 degrees expected in town. Low temperature 62, 63 out toward the island. Inland numbers, you'll wake up to some 50s out there, and it's a good weekend from there. 90 degrees, the number in town. It'll be slightly cooler along the coastline. Expect the high 80s out there. Plenty of hot sunshine. Humidity, not a problem for tomorrow. Not really even a problem on Sunday, though. It will start to creep up by Sunday afternoon. You'll at least notice that we're beginning to get back into a southern flow of air because by Sunday, that air direction is definitely southwestern. 66 degrees, bright skies outside side at 7 o'clock in the morning, 90 degrees, sunny and hot for a good part of the day tomorrow. Enjoy the weekend as it runs on. It's back to the heat and humidity by Monday at 94, Tuesday at 96, Wednesday at 94. I, I just can't think of a suitable gift. A radar range is A radar range is good. new Thank you, sir. That's the news tonight. You guys have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. Bye-bye. By the time Dad was finished talking, I was scared to death of buying a car. I know how these people operate, he goes. So when Dad announced he was coming along, I didn't stop him. Pretty soon, I even thought he really knew what he was talking about. Scary, huh? Then I had this idea. Dad goes, let me do the talking. But at Saturn, there were no hassles, even over the price. The thing about Dad is, he likes to feel useful, and that's cool. My basic love of dogs and my experience breeding dogs makes me enjoy my career as a veterinarian even more. David Qualls, top breeder of champion Siberian Huskies and doctor of veterinary medicine. We give our dogs pedigree as a source of meat in their diet. When you open a can of Choice Cuts, there's big meaty chunks and a rich brown gravy. You can really smell the meatiness. Pedigree contains no soy. Pedigree is a very digestible and very nutritious dog food. For my money, Pedigree is the best dog food. For two pilots who crashed at a British air show. And we'll tell you about a